Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Middays with Trey's, your weekly afternoon break. I'm your host, Trey. Let's get right to the show. We have a very special guest. He is an international award-winning clarinetist who has performed all over the world and has now brought his talents right here to CCU to work with students in music and diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's Eric Schultz. Hi, Trey. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being on the show. You know, we wanted to get you out here to talk about uh, music, your, your time abroad, just everything like that. So let's start from the beginning. How, mm -hmm. why, and when did you start playing clarinet? Uh, that's an interesting question because initially I wanted to play the saxophone because my uncle played the saxophone in like a jazz kind of dance band. So I grew up, you know, surrounded by jazz music and Benny Goodman, Artie Shaw, and also, uh, you know, funk music and all this great music. So I want to play the saxophone. Uh, and my band teacher made me start on the clarinet because too many kids wanted to play the saxophone. <laughs> Um, which ended up being great for my career because, you know, I learned all the woodwinds and definitely benefited from that going forward. Where's been your favorite place that you performed? Like, I, I, you know, reading your biography, it gives, it's a long list of places that you perform. So, like, where, if you could pick a couple, like, places that you perform, like, where would you say your favorites have been? Well, I've been, I've been really fortunate for sure. You know, I, could, I, I lived in New York for the better part of a decade and I'm a little jaded. Um, but, you know, sometimes I just look at all the opportunities I, I've had and I, I'm, I'm the luckiest person alive. I say it all the time. Um, this last season has been particularly amazing. I performed in Carnegie Hall three times. Um, one performance was premiering the um, music of a uh, Holocaust survivor um, who survived Auschwitz and his piece had never been played. We played it at Carnegie Hall. It was very emotional. Um, and, uh, you know, this season, a lot of great stuff's happening. Um, my chamber orchestra, the Victory Players, will be playing um, in Puerto Rico. So we'll be back on the island that inspired all of this amazing new music that we've commissioned over the last, you know, five years. So uh, lots of amazing things yeah. happening. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's great. And I heard you're making an album, the process of making an album. Yeah, we, re we uh, recorded it here in March, right here in the Edwards Recital Hall. Um, McKinley Devil Biss recorded it, and now it's been passed on to um, Grammy Award winning <laughs> audio engineer Antonio o Oliart. And so he's working on the album. I have no idea how long that's going to take, but yeah. hopefully I can get that out this year. So this is all new to me. It's my first album. So I'm um, very grateful for that as well. That's such a cool thing, especially that you're recording right here at yeah. CCU and especially in the Edwards College. It's, it's very cool. So uh, speaking of CCU, how did you get involved with DEI and you know everything that goes into that at CCU? Sure. Well, it was kind of a natural progression because my whole career has centered around, you know, commissioning new music and especially diverse new music. Like I talked about my chamber orchestra and our first project was El Puerto Rico. So we commissioned, you know, 10 Puerto Rican composers. Um, we moved on to now Mexican composers. And I talked about, you know, the Carnegie Hall de debut of the Auschwitz symphonic poem. Um, so when I got to Coastal, I was having conversations with students um, that had not had the experience of playing music by people that, you know, look like them, you know, whether that means um, female composers, Asian composers, you know, composers of, of color, Hispanic composers, anything. Um, and that was really hard to hear at the time. Or, you know, remember, I started here in August 2020 and we were having you know, all kinds of conversations coming out of the pandemic and, you know, what happened with George Floyd and all these, you know, kind of societal sociopolitical movements happening. Um, and so it, it just kind of happened naturally. And we just started, you know, with Diamond Gaston and, and my student Haley Cornell looking at, you know, who are the great women composers? Who are the great composers of color that we'll talk about um, out there and what amazing music is out there? And my gosh, should we find a gold mine of amazing music? So. So speaking about your work with students here at Coastal, what are some upcoming events that you guys have coming up uh, you know, for the semester or the rest of the year? Amazing events happening this semester. Um, we have uh, September 16th, um, the Edwards Center for Inclusive Excellence with the IS office and Myrtle Beach Pride. We're gonna be showing the movie Moonlight and have a talk back session as a kind of kickoff to Myrtle Beach Pride Week. Um, October 14th is Edwards Open House. So you'll get to hear from the new faculty fellows in the, in the Edwards Center for Inclusive Excellence about those new projects and new students and faculty starting in the center with their amazing ideas. Um, and then uh, November 11th, Friday, this is one to mark in your calendar. I keep calling it the concert of the century here because Valerie 
Coleman, cultural icon, composer, flutist, is going to be here on our campus for her artist residency here, working with our students, talking in the center, and then finally giving a, a performance of her music. Um, we're going to play, I'm so excited to perform with her, this amazing piece, Portraits of Langston. And um, so very much looking forward to that. Um, you know, the Valerie Coleman project has been just one of the kind of spin-off projects from what we were talking about with these conversations with students, mm -hmm. um, Diamond and Haley, and, and all the students in the Edwards Center for Inclusive Excellence. Um, you know, one issue we did run into was, um, you know, when you play the music of Mozart, Tchaikovsky, Brahms, the standard classical titans, that music, you can go on to an online music library and it's free. You can mm -hmm. just print it because it's in the public domain now. Right. You can't do that with a living composer. They depend on this music for their livelihood and it's copyrighted. And so, you know, even when a piece like Portraits of Langston or something might cost $30, $40, for a student, that's a significant inv investment. Mm -hmm. So I'm so grateful we have the AIDC here and the Edwards College and the music department that support all of this. And they just bought the entire, you know, Valerie Coleman Music Library. So I brought that here today to to show, show it off a little bit. Um, and we have, you know, the entire collection. She even sent some of her orchestral music, which I'm so grateful for, her orchestral score. Um, a little note about this work, Umoja. Um, you've heard, if you walked through the Edwards Courtyard um, this past year, you've heard this work because the Woodwind Ensemble has been playing it, you know, nonstop, too much probably, right? Um, but this work, you know, Valerie made history in 2019 when she was commissioned by the um, Philadelphia Orchestra. Um, she was the first woman of color ever commissioned by a major American orchestra, um, a big five American orchestra, as we call it. So um, she secured her page in the history books, and it's our honor to have her here, and I, I just can't wait. So yeah. please mark that in your calendar, November 11th, uh, 6 p.m. right here in Edwards Recital Hall. That's great. And, and how can students or even faculty and staff get involved in, you know, the uh, DIE services at Coastal, especially within the Edwards College? Sure. You know, we have an amazing, um, supportive college and university community more broadly, and there are amazing organizations. Um, if you're interested in doing DEI work, reach out to me. Um, come talk to our students in the center or just come sit in on a, one of our meetings and see, you know, the ideas, these amazing ideas these students have. Um, and, you know, we, we often too, you know, for example, with, with Valerie Coleman being here, when the is office, Marquita and Josh heard about that. They're like, can we do something for her? We, this is a good idea. Can we get in on this? And, and women and gender studies is, as well wants to, you know, come in and work and listen to her. What does she have to say? It's, we're not just going to be playing her music, but also like hearing her stories and where she comes from. Um, so, uh, you know, just reach out. Um, come meet with us and um, network. You know, it's an amazing community. And I, I always say, you know, to my students, if you have a good idea, that idea will spread. We've seen that. This all just started with, with conversations, you know, a year ago. And look, look at all the amazing things that have come out of it. Um, so as I tell my students, go sing from the mountaintops. You know, once you have a great idea, let people know. And that idea can, can really take over. Wow, that's all great stuff, Eric. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. For this week's hat of the week, we're rocking the Takis hat. And this hat actually has a pretty funny story. So a couple of Fridays ago, before classes started, uh, it, we had an abandoned event um, you know, at Walmart on 501. If you're not familiar with 501, if you're not from Highway Myrtle Beach, that's the main highway that goes through pretty much everything in this in this city slash town. Um, and, and, and the Walmart, we had the band playing as people were getting their groceries, as students were getting their, you know, their move-in stuff, you know, their pillows, their bed sheets, you know, everything that they needed to move in, the band was playing for them. Um, and, and so they also had a table set out with different vendors. So they had Sara Lee, they had different, uh, they had like ice, the, you know, sparkling drinks, and they also had Takis. And Takis was giving out these awesome purple hats. You don't really see purple hats like that, you know. As the shot of clears, we were at teal, of course. So we see a lot of teal, but you know, the, so the purple kind of stood out in a little bit. So all the percussion in the uh, in the marching band got got these hats, and I was like, this is a perfect photo opportunity. So I got Chauncey, you know, our mascot. Um, I got him in, in in the percussions, and I took a picture. Well, you know, we'll put that. Can we put that up there? We can. Okay, cool. Now you're seeing the picture. So. This is a very random picture, but it, you know, I tagged Takis on social media when I posted it and they actually responded. Now, they only said, they only responded with, we love purple, but a response is a response and they're verified. So now we're basically verified. So that's the hat of the week. As you can see, it is this nice purple Takis hat and no, we are not sponsored. 
congratulations students and faculty and staff on completing your first week here at Coastal Carolina University, whether it's your first year, second year, third year, fourth year, 16th year, maybe of teaching, that's okay, but congratulations on completing the first year of the 2022 semester. We had a lot of things going on last week. Let's, ch let's check that out. So as you can see, we had a lot of stuff going on last week and it's just gonna keep rolling with the events, the speakers, the educational sessions. So just keep tuned, stay tuned with the Edwards College and you know, just coastal in general and enjoy the coastal experience. So now it's time for your weekly update. So starting September 5th and running through October 7th, we're gonna have world renowned artists and actually the HTC uh, Distinguished Teacher Scholar of the Year, Charles Clary. And he is a professor here at Edwards and he is, like I said, a world renowned artist. And he actually will have um, his, you know, his artwork for display in the Rebecca Randall Bryan Art Gallery downstairs in the Edwards building. If you don't know about that, please come check it out. His artwork is amazing. He does like paper cutout artwork. So if you haven't seen it, it's, it's amazing. I would definitely recommend checking it out. All right, that wraps up this week's episode of Midday with Trace. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you tune in next week, same time, same place. Bye.